is giving his speech number five from an advanced manual, the storytelling manual. The title of his speech is A Gold Medal Presentation. A Gold Medal Presentation, David McCook. It's July 2005 in the Singapore Convention Center. At the lectern is Dr. Jacques Rogue, president of the International Olympic Committee. In his hand is a white envelope. Inside this white envelope is the name of the city that will win the 2012 Summer Games. Now you think you probably know the answer to the city that's in this envelope. But what you might not know is why that city won the games. Well, it started eight years earlier when each of the five finalists submitted these massive written proposals to the IOC. Inside the proposals were details like projected temperatures, wind speeds, wind direction, and how each city would handle the particular dietary needs of specific athletes that had religious restrictions. Now the IOC deemed these five proposals as relatively equal, because after all, these were five world-class cities. Moscow, New York City, Madrid, Paris, and London. So how would the IOC pick the winner? Well, it would all come down to a 45-minute presentation that each country had the opportunity to give. And after these 45-minute presentations would be finished, the 106 members would vote a single vote for the city that they thought should win the games. In order for a city to win the games, that city needed to achieve at least 50% of the votes. If, that si if no one city achieved 50% of the votes, the city that achieved the least amount of votes would be eliminated, and then they would vote again until a particular city had a majority. Make sense? All right. So after the first vote, there was no majority. Moscow, dos vidanya. After the second round of votes, no majority. New York City, out of the cab. <laughs> After the third round of votes, no majority. Madrid, adios. So now it came down to Paris and London, the two finalists, each vying for civic pride, national pride, and an estimated $8 billion in economic benefit that would come to that particular city. Well, Paris was heavily favored. Paris was riding the momentum of a highly successful World Cup that they had hosted in 1998. And not only did France put on an impeccably run tournament, but their French team won the entire cup. Now, to give you a sense of how heavily favored Paris was, at the time when Jacques Rogue was holding up the white envelope, there were 50 photographers in the room. 47 of them had their lenses focused on Paris, <laughs> waiting to see the reaction of the Paris team. And at that point, David Beckham, the English soccer captain who was in the audience, in typical Br uh, British understatement, turned to Sir Bobby Charlton and said, this does not look good. <laughs> <laughs> so what could London do to win the games? Well, London knew that they were an underdog, and this freed them up to take a risk. They decided that rather than take the traditional route of making the presentation all about them, all about why London was the best city for the games, they made it all about their audience, the 106 IOC members. And they decided to develop a theme, a theme that was bigger than just the Olympic Games. And that, that theme, attracting young people to sport. Now this was a brilliant move for a couple of reasons. One, we've got this worldwide problem of childhood inactivity and obesity. And you could almost imagine seeing those 106 IOC members sitting around saying, I can't get my grandkids to get off the couch and pick up a shot put to save my life. All they want to do is sit around and shot put some angry birds. <laughs> the other thing that the London team did was they did their research. And they knew that the 106 IOC members were made up of mostly men, average age 65, and that 20 of these members were 80 years or older. 
so that they knew for these gentlemen, mostly, that the idea of leaving a legacy was really important. And so this idea of tapping into something bigger than just the games, the idea of leaving this legacy of attracting young people, was something significant and bigger than just awarding the games to a particular city. So the other thing that, uh, that London did was they picked as their bid leader, Sebastian Coe, a former Olympian. And they were the only bid city that actually did this. So that was a smart move. And London's presentation was made up of six particular different presenters. One was the mayor of London, Ken Livingstone. One was Tony Blair, the prime minister. And then the one that was really significant was Sebastian Coe's presentation. I just want to read to you a small excerpt from that presentation to give you a sense of the, the flavor of it. Sebastian Coe said, to make an Olympic champion takes millions of young people around the world to be inspired to choose Olympic sport. London is ready to face that challenge. We can no longer take for granted that young people will choose sport. Some may lack the facilities, the resources, or the role models. Others in an era of 24-hour entertainment and instant fame may simply lack the desire. But we are determined to address that challenge. London's mission is to reach young people around the world, to connect with them with the inspirational power of the games, so they are inspired to choose sport. I'm delighted that we have 30 young people with us here on stage today. Why did we choose young people instead of the typical politicians or businessmen? Because we're inspired and we want people to connect with young people. Each of these kids comes from East London, an area of town known for its cultural mix of over 200 nations practicing every faith and every religion. What unites them is London, their love of sport and their heartfelt desire to bring the Olympic Games back to London. Now, the best way for me to differentiate between the London presentation and the Paris presentation is simply to deliver the concluding thought. Here's what Paris said. Paris wants the games. Paris needs the games. Paris loves the games. <laughs> Pretty much Paris, Paris, Paris. <laughs> By contrast, London said, on behalf of the youth of today, the athletes of tomorrow, and the Olympians of the future, we humbly submit to you the bid of London 2012. It's July 2005 in the Singapore Convention Center, and Jock Rogue is holding up the white envelope. In the audience, we have the Paris team. They've got their arms around each other in a show of solidarity, nervously waiting the answer to what's in this white envelope. Over here, you have the British team with no physical contact because, well, that wouldn't be very British. <laughs> so when Jock Road pulls out the name of London 2012, there is an eruption of joy. High fives, bear hugs, and shouts of joy that could be heard from Singapore all the way across the pond back in London. So why did London win? Because London told a better story, a story that wasn't all about London, a story that was the IOC's story, and a story about attracting youth around the world to choose sport.